Wherever you are in the world, good day, good people, good day, and welcome to WOW, Wish Only Well Live television show, where I am your host, your fantabulous host, Siobhan Gross, marriage and family therapist, inspirational coach, and motivational speaker. Listen, guys, it's Wednesday. It is a wonderful, wonderful Wednesday indeed. And you know what we do on Wednesdays, we WOW. And by WOW, I mean to wish only well all across the world. Listen, I am so super excited about my special guest, um, Pastor Tracy Manley uh, is my special guest on tonight. Uh, I am, however, still waiting for Pastor uh, Manley to jump. She was here, uh, but she's having some technical issues, some technical difficulties, but uh, I am going to still go forth with introducing her uh, as she worked through those issues. Um, because we need a word, Pastor Tracy. We need a word from on high. Listen, this is my favorite time of the year. It's the Thanksgiving season. And it is always, don't get me wrong, always a good time to give thanks, right? To have an attitude of gratitude. And we're going to talk more about that on next week with special guest uh, Evangelist Selena Williams. Uh, but tonight is all about me and uh, Pastor Tracy Manley. So, let me tell you about special guest, uh, Pastor Tracy Manley. Pastor Tracy Manley currently serves as an ambassador for the New Life International Fellowship of Churches under the leadership of Apostle Yolanda C. Scott and Bishop Demetric Scott. Pastor Tracy is truly a committed servant to uh, the work of the Lord and stands on the principles of unity, love, and service. Pastor Tracy hails from the great state of Virginia and currently resides in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Pastor Tracy was ordained to teach and preach the word of God at New Life of Petersburg, Virginia in 2018. In 2019, God launched her out into the deep to accept the call to New Life of, Clu of Clewiston, Florida in 2019. Pastor Tracy continues to exemplify, exemplify a strong sense of commitment to the people of God and the things of God. Pastor Tracy is passionate about helping in the community and the highways and byways. You will never find her on the sidelines. You will always find her busy at work, no matter the job or sacrifice. Just a wild woman. Pastor Tracy is the founder of the Conquering Queen, which is a platform to strengthen, encourage, empower, and catapult women into their God-assigned and designed destiny. You can find the Queendom of TCQ on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Pastor Tracy hopes to partner with her husband soon to create a platform to strengthen and encourage uh, married couples and blended families. Pastor Tracy is married to Andre Manley, and together they have a blended family, guys, of six children Jaquan, Jordan, Najay, Andrea, India, and Jada. Pastor Tracy currently co owns Manley Made Incorporated alongside her husband, Andre, and she also co owns Hand of Hearts Home Health Care. LLC. One of Pastor Tracy's favorite goals is to teach everyone willing to learn how to become entrepreneurs and how to live on purpose and with a plan. Pastor Tracy will be launching her own life coaching platform in early 2023. Her favorite scripture is Luke 22 and 31. Oh, I like this one too, Pastor Tracy. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. Verse 32 says, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. It is this scripture that reminds her that no matter what lies ahead of her, of her the prayers have gone before her. That's so important to just know. No matter um, what lies ahead, knowing if you are a believer in Christ, knowing that those prayers have already gone ahead. Um, no matter the test, the trial or tribulation, the word has already gone forth that faith will always keep her afloat. 
doing ministry, knowing that the son is praying for us, brings a sense of peace on this journey um, to the father. Listen, guys, and our special guest tonight will be Pastor Tracy Manley. Uh, again, Pastor Manley was uh, having, uh, Pastor Tracy, as she likes to go by, was having some technical difficulties. She joined initially um, just fine. Um, and we were having great conversation prior to uh, the show going live. But this is when you know that things are going to be really great. And there is a word for somebody because the devil is always uh, trying to intervene uh, when the word is going to go forth. So, um, Listen, I am so super excited. I hope you guys were able to log in and catch um, Daughter's Talk on Friday. Um, I was a special guest and a special shout out to um, Prophetess Rashida Hay for allowing me to be the special guest on um, this past Friday night on Daughter's Talk, Talk. So if you missed that episode, I ask that you please go back. You can find it on Elevation TV, a network Facebook page, but you can also find it on my page. So go back and look at that. And I hope that it was a word um, that would bless uh, you richly. And listen, guys, without further ado, let me get out of the way and bring forth my very special guest on tonight. None other than the fabulous, the phenomenal Pastor Tracy Manley. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> good evening, good evening. I don't know what the issue was. We were here, then we were knocked off. I'm not sure what all happened, but uh, we're here now. We're here now. Oh, we're just oh so God. thankful that you are actually here. I said to the uh, viewers that we know that we are in for a great time and that the word is going to go forth, right? There is a word definitely within you. You may not even realize it, but there is definitely a word within you that is needed for such a time as this for someone who is watching this broadcast or who may watch the broadcast to come because we've had so uh, many, <laughs> we had quite the, we initially started off well. You were able to just join us and we were having great conversation and all of a sudden it just disconnected uh, us. But that's OK. Nevertheless, you are here and we are going forth. I've already read all of this uh, fabulous information <laughs> about you. So I've introduced you um, to everyone um, to let them know about Pastor Tracy Manley and what it is that you have going on and more importantly about that call that you have on your life. And so um, we're just excited. I was just talking about how grateful I am. It's the coming up on the Thanksgiving season. Um, but you know what? Any day, every day, all day is a good day to give thanks. Uh, and I do that. Um, this is just happens to be my favorite time of the year. So listen, Pastor Tracy, what you got to say so far? <laughs> I, I definitely want to thank you for, for being here tonight. Definitely want to thank you for the opportunity to come and share. And it's just so amazing that we are in the season of Thanksgiving, the season to be thankful. And I'm just going to share just a little bit about um, a little bit about what was shared with me um, through Holy Spirit this morning on the uh, prayer call. So on Tuesdays, well, my organization, um, my apostle, Apostle Yolanda Scott has a prayer call that's Monday through Friday, um, 7 a.m. Um, every, every, every day, 7 a.m. Monday through Friday. Um, and we do it um, via conference call. So Tuesdays is my day. So I never know what God is going to do. <laughs> so as I was in prayer um, yesterday morning, God began to speak on Thanksgiving. And that we're entering into another holiday season. We're entering into another Thanksgiving. And he said, switch it up this year. And I was like, oh, switch it up this year. What are you saying? And he was saying, switch it up this year. So that when we go, instead of going to the table saying, um, thank you for this food that I'm about to receive. It's nourishment to, my, to our bodies. Bless the hands that prepared it. In Jesus' name, amen. God said, no, instead of doing that this year, go mm -hmm. around the table. 
reconnect the family around the table this year for Thanksgiving. For Thanksgiving this year, make everybody that's old enough to talk give a reason to be thankful this holiday season. Don't just bless the food. Bless the one first who blessed you to be able to even have the food, to, a, to even be able to gather. So um, God just kind of threw me off when he said that in prayer on Tuesday because I tell people all the time, I let him use me. Mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I don't ask him um, to be used. I ask him to use me for his glory. So when you ask God to let <laughs> you allow God to use you, uh, you sometimes you may not, you may get more than what you thought you bargained for, but when he switch it up and says, I said, say this, then I, I do that. And sometimes I'm stepping on my own toes, right? Sometimes I'm dealing with me, he dealing with me while he's dealing with everybody else. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. So that's where he had me today um, on yesterday having you to even talk about thanksgiving so you know for everybody that's viewing and everybody that will catch the replay um that is something that was very important for god for us to reconnect the families at the dinner table this year but to reconnect them but to reconnect them to him this year oh my gosh that is just amazing so amazing and forgive me i wanted to make sure because i know that you and i were planning to uh, I, I don't want uh, anyone who's watching or who will watch to think that I'm being disrespectful because I had my head down. I was listening right. and I know that I wanted to share this live so that your viewers would be able to hear, you know, as you go forth with the word. And you've already said a mouthful about Thanksgiving and what we need to do in terms of connecting the families, get around the table and have everyone at that table, everyone at the gathering to give a reason or reasons. Because when you name one, I guarantee you two gonna come three four and five think about the reasons that you have that you're thankful for the things that have that that you have you know i say this all the time <clears throat> not all the time but i've been saying this a lot lately we focus so much on the things that we don't have right and when we focus on the things that we don't have, we miss the opportunity to be grateful for the things that we do have. So if we can focus on what it is that we have instead of thinking about what we don't have or what we need, but just be thankful for what we already have, you would be amazed at how much you've, just how richly blessed you already are. So I love the fact that you said that. And you know what? We can go all day to talk about families because families is, something that's dear to my heart. It's a subject. I happen to be a family therapist, um, but I come from a large family. I'm a very family oriented person. So I do, um, you know, believe in, um, you know, just the beauty of families and getting together and be able to celebrate. Yes. Yes. I'm looking at the comment. We got greetings here from Yolanda C. Scott. Angela Parker says that she loved that reconnection with God. I am so grateful to God for just the little things. Amen. Amen. So Pastor Tracy, listen, I know that this is probably, um, you're always busy going from one city to another. I mean, how do you, even in this, in this season, how do you keep it all together? You know, <laughs> how do you keep it all together? You know, that is one of the hardest things is um, maintaining from one state to the next. Um, in my fellowship, New Life International Fellowship of Churches, um, we are we have several different locations. We have we have locations in Georgia, Virginia, um, Florida. We have several locations in Florida. Um, my apostle, Apostle Yolanda C. Scott and Bishop Demetrius Scott, they are launching more. Um, more locations in 2023 so i would i would be even busier in 2023 but mm -hmm. what i what i love about it is i love god i love the things of god um mm -hmm. sometimes it seems like i would get tired and i would get weary but to, but i can honestly say when it comes down to ministry i do not get weary and well doing so if i'm stretched from state to state wherever they say they need me that's where i'm going and i just love ministry i love working for god i love being the hands and feet of jesus 
And I serve under an organization that allows us to be free to serve, free to um, wherever we wherever our gifts lie. We are free to use those gifts. And, you know, I have to say six years ago when I joined the organization, I had no idea I would be doing what I'm doing now. Like no one could have told me six years ago, girl, you'll be living in Virginia and you'll be living in Florida. But you might have to go over to Georgia for a little while. Nobody could have ever told me that. I wouldn't have never believed that. And at 50 years old, I just turned 50, well, I just turned 51. At 51 years old, if somebody was to ask me, girl, how do you keep going? And I and I my answer would be just simply grace. I'm I'm this. And I could I wouldn't have told you that two years ago. I wouldn't have told wow. you that five years ago. Because I wouldn't have been confident enough in who God called me to be to tell you I'm graced to do this. Everybody may not be able to do it. It may seem crazy right. to a lot of people, yeah. but it's yeah. grace. It's the all that's that's on my life. It's the all on my apostle's life, and she goes probably just as much as I. Well, she goes more than I do, but it, it comes with an understanding of once you know who God called you to be then you can begin to work how he needs you to work. And I found that in the stretching, um, it's something about the stretching that that just says, if God is stretching you, that means he sees something in you that maybe you don't even fully see in yourself. But if he's stretching me like this, I got to own up to it in my joint year. We're about to go into 2023. The young people oh, say that joint year when they turn 23. Well, baby, I'm calling it my joint year, meaning it's my winning year. If Jordan was the GOAT, I'm about to be the GOAT in 2023. Oh, what I'm sorry about yes 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 so the stretch i'm excited about the stretch because that means there's more in me oh i absolutely love it you hit so many points in in that what you (laughs) said right there i mean you said a whole mouthful but it was nothing but the truth and i love it yes you are graceful everybody's not graceful that's why we have to be mindful of what it is that God has purpose for us to do, right? And we got to make sure that we're walking in our God-ordained purpose and not doing what we want to do. When it's God's ordained purpose, he will give us what we need to be, even the endurance, the strength to go and to be able to do. So I love it. You're just fulfilling what the word says. You know, God, uh, in, in the Bible, it speaks of when it says, go ye therefore and teach the nations. So, you know, with you guys being able to spread out in 2023 and have all these different locations, that's kingdom build, build, building. And in this season, we need to be about kingdom business because there's so much animosity, so much division, so much strife uh, in, in the world, just a whole bunch of negativity. So being able to what we're missing um is the word we're missing the principle really if we go back to if we even go back to history and how we even started you know in the states we start we were a country who who was built on uh god about serving god and the principles within the bible we've gotten away from that because now we are open to doing um and seeing and believing, right? And being, you know, welcoming to every type of situation, every Mm -hmm. act, everything, right? So we've gotten away from the root, we've gotten away from the word, you know? And so we've got to go back there. We've got to build our churches. The word says, uh, uh, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church, right? And so so we, it's definitely uh, in a time, in a season where the things that you're doing along with your apostle that you all are doing is just great just just greatness and i listen i'm looking forward to that jordan year two you just made me excited to say that it <laughs> is the goat. you plan to be the goat too i just absolutely love it love it love it love it so listen we were talking earlier we mentioned about families and you talked about how god had given dropped in your spirit that uh it needs to be different this year. It needs to be where people actually sit down with family, a true family gathering. We talk about the goodness of God and, and being grateful for the things that he has done for us or that he is doing 
even in what we're believing him to do. And so uh, in reading your bio, I talked about the fact that even in 2023, your vision is to have a life coaching um, session. And what you want to be able to do is help married couples uh, because you are a married woman, you and your husband to come together and to help families, right? Because of the fact that you have mastered what a lot of people fail to do. I'm a marriage and family therapist and I've seen this happen a lot of times. It's a very difficult place sometimes to be in when you're trying to bring together two families, like when you're trying to blend a family together, meaning you come to the marriage with your children, your husband come to the marriage, to the marriage with his children from previous marriages or previous relationships. That's not an easy feat. That's not an easy task. Would you like to share more about that and how you've been able to manage your and your husband, uh, Mr. Andre, how you guys have been able to make this work? Well, you know, you got a little bit of our, <laughs> of our inside life in Memphis <laughs> I did. I where, did. where we met. So you 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 pretty much got to see, and most people that know Andre and I, they know that we are definitely a two-sided coin for real. You mm -hmm. def most people that know us know if you flip to one side, you get me, you flip to the other side, you get him, but we are perfectly matched together. Yeah. Like literally, we are heads and tails, we are day and we are night, but we are definitely destined, we were destined to be together. Even when it, some days when it looked like we weren't destined to be together, we were definitely destined for one another. And I have to admit that I had to grow to this place that I'm at today. 11 years ago, when we became a blended family, I did not know what I know today. I had not experienced the fullness of God um, in our marriage, even though I was the one that was actively going to church every Sunday. I still had not fully understood or fully embraced the fullness of God mm -hmm. in my life or for my marriage. So it wasn't until five years later when um, my church, I, I started you know, with new life of Petersburg, it wasn't until then that that was a different press on my life. It was a different pull on my life. It was a different grace on my life. So for the first six years, for the first five years, we were sustaining, but we were sustaining off the understanding of knowing who God was, but we weren't, we weren't sustaining off of really allowing God to guide the marriage. Yeah, because you can you can you can be in a union and you can love God and you can go to church every Sunday and you can do all of that and still not fully render your marriage over to God. You're right. So because I had not rendered the marriage over to God wholeheartedly, I had not um rendered the children over to God wholeheartedly. So what I can teach people today. I, I, I had a session um, on Saturday that I that I was invited to speak to some ladies that were just coming together just for conversation. And I was able to tell them it wasn't my job to re-raise re the children. Mm -hmm. It wasn't my job to re-raise my husband. It wasn't my job to try to make them something that they were not. It was my job to love them. That was mm -hmm. on that simple. It was my job to love them and allow God to be God. And we oftentimes we get in God's way. We get in God's business. But I'm mature today. I, I, I've grown today to be able to say, no, I did not. I didn't know then what I know now. But because I do know what I know now, I can teach somebody else or I can help somebody else to say, you have that kid that's not yours. Don't try to make that child your child. Do what your child do. Do what you taught your child to do. Love that child because the first thing they need in a blended family is to be loved. Because if the family is already been torn apart then there are some already broken pieces that need to be dealt with and it don't need to be dealt with with all your conversation or all your changes it need to be dealt with first in love and then let god move the way he needs to move we didn't do that but just because i didn't do that or we didn't do that before or we didn't know to do that but god is a restorer of time God is a restorer of people. 
and God will, will, will give you back the days. So we're at a place now where my husband and our children are in a place that we're learning to love now. Not try to lead each other first, just love. Oh my gosh. That is so important. Love is a key ingredient. I, whenever I have uh, been able to have the opportunity to speak with people about relationships and things of that nature, I always uh, do it from a perspective of, of a recipe, right? The recipe for what makes a success, successful relationship. And one of the key ingredients is love, right? One of the key ingredients. It's not the only ingredient, but it is a very important one. And I'm glad that you pointed that out because even it's so important because we do, we come in and we think, right, that we've got to retrain the child how to get the child on, you know, to do things, to do things the way we do and to do things the way my kids do. But the first thing you got to do is that you have to be able to love that child so that that child or children can feel accepted because that's what it's all about. You know, we have, you know, we, we, even when we're new in Christ, when we, when we come to Christ, right, we come with all of our baggage and everything that we have going on, but he, there's a period where he knows everybody's not at the same level, right? But he meets us there. He meets us where we are and he meets us there with compassion, with love, right? With acceptance that he he accepts us as our child with our faults because we're not perfect. And even as we grow, right, within this relationship, as we strengthen the relationship with him, we still have issues. But guess what? He continues to love us. He continues to love us. And because he continues to love us and he because he continues to take care of us, we're more apt to do, right? We're more apt to do the things that he wants us to do. We're more apt to build that relationship, right? Uh, so yes, I just absolutely love what it is that you've shared about, you know, uh, uh, the blended uh, family. So it's so much, this conversation, we can have a whole conversation about the things that you're doing, um, the things that God, uh, the things that God is doing uh, to you uh, th and through you, um, for whatever reason, I cannot get my words out today, but it is all good. You know me, you didn't have a, had a conversation about the day. We done had a conversation about yes. the day, but God <laughs> is still good. The word is still going forth and somebody's going to get the message that they need uh, today, right? So, yeah. So, listen, I know, um, oh my gosh, you have a cleaning business. You also have, you're one of the, you and your husband have a cleaning business. And you also have um, a um, a home, a personal care home, I think it is. Did I get it wrong? <laughs> Helping, you okay. have a, two businesses. I know you got two, you got at least two businesses, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, business. Business is a whole it's a whole different um, arena outside outside of ministry. And I look, I didn't even mention that we do have a location in Ghana. So you're going to see me off in Africa next year. Oh, my goodness. Take me with you. Yes. Yeah, we, we do have a new life um, of Ghana that um, our apostle uh, planted a few years ago. So um, and I know that we, we will be traveling more to Ghana in 2023. So um, you're going to see me stretched all over. Um, my apostle is slated to um, plant like twelve churches total, so wow. we're not even we're not even there yet. We you know we might be halfway there, so we could be in six different states in the next couple of years. And uh, I'm excited though. <laughs> you should be excited, and then, like, again, that's what we need. Just like we need the word over here in the United States, the word is needed over there in Ghana. It's needed in Africa. It's needed everywhere. So you listen. You can't plant too many uh, yeah. churches. We can't have enough because you know, like again, I said the time. It is the time and the season where because men and women are hurting, boys and girls are hurting. They need yeah. to know the word. They need to know the way. Right. And so, yeah, so it's so important uh, for us to be able to get the word out there. Right. To show Christ. And you mentioned again, we're going back to that love because that's what it's all about. It's about us living the life. And for us as Christians, we have to be that walking Bible. If, if, yeah, if no one because right, because the person who we're trying to we want that light to show through us. Right. They may not never read the Bible. Right. But they should be able to see witness and experience. Right the characteristics of Christ, because as believers in Christ, that's what it's, that's what it's all about. It's about us 
you know, showing, um, you know, that light, right? Being that light, that beacon of hope, if, if, if that makes right. sense to you. Yeah, yeah, awesome. You know, oh my gosh. Talking about the business, so I really believe that um, when it comes down to kingdom, I believe that God is just trying to pull people out of what I consider bondage, um, mm -hmm. out of places of feeling like that their li lives aren't being fulfilled on a job or or their, their lives aren't being fulfilled with doing what they've been doing for the last 20, 30 years. So I just believe that when it comes down to business, I believe that we are in an era right now where God is trying to bring the marketplace forward. I was just telling somebody the other day, I said, sometimes we'll look at what God puts in our life and we'll look at it and we'll only see it in a certain area. We'll, we'll put people in a box so fast that get the fullness out of people. So, you know, I, one may say God pulled me out of out of my Baptist background or out of the Baptist church because he wanted me to flow in, in the fivefold ministry and really use all the gifts that he's given me. But I really believe he also pulled me out so that the entrepreneur in me can be rebirthed. Like I've always, I've been an entrepreneur for about 13 years, but I became an entrepreneur, not because, not for the right reason. I really became an entrepreneur because I lost the job and in the midst of losing the job, I was losing everything that I owned because of losing the job. So what happened was I decided, well, I'm never going to put myself in a position where I have no control over my income. So I asked myself the question, because right after I lost the job, I still what I did was because I'm I was smart. I'm 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 so I was I did not realize really how much was in me. I'm just really starting to learn what's in me over the last couple of years, especially during COVID. I think I don't know, but what I did the day I lost my job, it was for a newspaper company. I was the home delivery manager. I was the next person, next right underneath the boss. So you know. I thought that was going to be my career. I loved the job. I wasn't in too much. I wasn't out too much. I love people. I could see people all day in the office, in the field. I, I thought it was the job of my dreams. And then all of a sudden, boom, girl, I don't know what it is about you, but these people here don't like you. This is what the boss is telling me. He said, these people here don't like you. If you're in the office too much, they complain. If you're out of the office too much, they complain. So then, of course, we don't know who we are. We don't know our value right away. So this little light that, that people say that they see when they see me, um, I guess they saw it back in 2002. I just didn't see it. I just thought I'm doing my job. What is the issue? So what did I do? I lost my job, wrong for termination. Um, they fought the unemployment and eventually after 10 long weeks, the unemployment officer finally said, you do not have grounds to not pay her. The termination was not legal if it was somewhere else. But Virginia is an at will state, meaning I can fire you if I don't like the color of your hair. Right. And nothing you can do about it because this is an at will state. But what mm -hmm. did Tracy do? Two days later. I had them delivering papers to me to a to a drop location. I would pick up the papers from the drop location and keep delivering papers for the same company that fired me. <laughs> when they found out that I was still working for them in somebody else's name, they finally said, if you want to come and deliver papers, you can. Why? Because they knew they had gotten rid of somebody valuable. Mm -hmm. Only I didn't know how valuable I really was then all I know knew was I, I I'm going to survive. I lost my stuff, but but for the people that know me, I delivered the Progress Index. I delivered the Richmond Times Dispatch. I delivered the Daily Press, and they were all in three different localities. They stretched wow. about two hours apart, and I was delivering for all three of them. Because if I was nothing else, I was a hustler. If I was nothing else, my baby won't go go hungry and I won't go go without a roof over our heads. And we were going to make sure that we had clothes on our back. Now, we may not have had the best of everything during those times, but we never went hungry. So one day after just getting tired of delivering 
papers day and night, seven days a week, 363 days a year. I said, what do I do better than anybody else? I had to get to that hard place and ask myself that question. And my answer was, girl, nobody. Nobody. I, nobody cleans better than you. I love so it. What did I do? I got a mop, a bucket, a fabuloso bleach pledge, some dusters, some cheap card, business cards from Vista Print that I probably paid $10 for. I mm -hmm. hit the street. Mm -hmm. And I got one or two referrals, one or two contracts cleaning people houses and then they referred and they referred because what happens when you are the best at what you do you don't you you don't even have to be walking around passing out anything because people don't refer you why because nobody does it better than you so here i there i was started this cleaning business didn't know nothing all i knew is i know how to clean i didn't know how to charge I didn't know nothing about square feet. I didn't know nothing about um, what what removes this or what removes that. I learned everything that I learned along the way, from from the from the from the ground floor. I had to learn it all. I, there were contracts that I underbid it myself, but can I tell you that tw twelve years ago I was underbidding myself? But two years ago, in the height of COVID, God compensated me for every person that even allowed me to underbid myself. Yeah, uh -huh. nobody, nobody does it better. So where I am today, because I worked hard at my business. I didn't under, fully understand business. I did most of it myself. So I burnt out. But where I am today, where you are today. I'm trying to do other businesses, I have to come to a Jesus moment. Oh. Girl, you're trying to start everything else, but what have you invested in the one thing that you do better than anybody else? Because I let a con God bless me with the contract that I have today, but I still have not put any effort into growing that business, growing what I love. Sometimes we'll get caught up in what other people are doing and we'll get caught up in what how other people are making money and we'll lose sight of what we actually can do and nobody can do it better. So if nobody can do it better, then baby, there's more. <laughs> I so love it. When I come from off a of Thanksgiving break, I'm, I'm beating the streets. I'm taking it back to the basics. I'm taking it back to the beginning. I'm taking it back to where God first showed me. If you started from nothing, not knowing nothing, and you ended up where you are today, imagine where you can be next year this time where, because you already know what you know. So mm. you start that thing, girl, because you know more today than you knew 10 years ago. But in my quest of doing that, I tell people all the time, I know I'm going to ultimately be a business coach. Why? Because I want to see everybody winning. I want to see everybody winning. I want to see everybody moving into the Jordan year, getting paid off of what they do better than anybody. I don't care if you sew better than anybody that you know. I don't care if you cook. I don't care if you make candles. I don't care if you bake brownies. I don't care what it is you do. In this day and age, it, everybody should be a business owner. Everybody should be able to make a dollar that they decide whether they're going to make it or not. Because we can get laid off at any given COVID can come again and shut the nation down again. And then what are you going to do? Baby, while people were losing in COVID, this little old cleaner right here, I was making money during COVID. I didn't lose one dollar. <laughs> Look at that. I gained a few dollars doing COVID, but I gained it doing what I do best. And sometimes we got to realize it, just because it, it's a janitorial business doesn't mean that it doesn't do what the IT business does. Just, to, just because it requires a mop and a bucket and it doesn't require a laptop does not mean that it doesn't do the same stuff that the laptop business does. Just because I don't push paper and I push brooms don't mean that I that God don't get some glory from even me pushing a broom because while I'm yes. pushing a broom, 
do, I'm hiring 15 people to push brooms with me. Just because I'm pushing a broom, that don't mean nothing, baby, because I'm, I'm ministering to somebody while I'm pushing a broom. So wherever it is, whatever your gifting is, whatever your calling is, I, I'm, I'm here to tell somebody tonight, I don't care what the business is. It may not look like a good business. It may look like it's beneath you or beneath somebody else. But baby, if nobody does it better than you, it's about to make you millions if you let it. Oh my God, you just said a whole, whole mouthful, right? And that is definitely a word for somebody. That's why we had issues getting on, right? <laughs> All yes, of the problems did. because somebody needed to hear that, you know what, we sit on our gifts and talent. This is why I kept pointing in my hand to say, use what's in your hand. God yes. has given you everything that you need to be successful. And sometimes we withhold, we keep ourselves back. We are our own worst enemy because we talk ourselves out of doing what we know we should be doing. Listen, Pastor Tracy, it has been such a blessing to have you here with me tonight um, on this wild platform. Um, the viewers have just really loved it. The chat over here, the comments have just been going, going off uh, with people um, making comments uh, to uh, what you have had. So thank you so much for coming on WOW here to share words of wisdom uh, with our viewers to share about your story and your businesses and your ministry. Listen, it's always a pleasure. And I'm so thankful for our connection. We went, we yes. met in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, and it's just been awesome. We've, we've stayed connected ever since. And so I'm looking forward to seeing you do greater things in 2023 and the years to come uh, and know that I'm going to be right there with you my joy i'm claiming that is my winning yes. winning season yes. to my jordan year as well so listen guys this is all of our time but before we get off quickly pastor tracy will you please tell the viewers uh how it is that they can maintain uh contact with pastor tracy manley Yes, and I just want to tell the viewers that uh, anybody that followed me, uh, this young lady right here, marriage and family therapist, come on now. We've been talking about, um, I know that in my organization, we talk freely about, you know, we sometimes we need the extra help. So mm -hmm. there's a marriage and family therapist right here, right, right here. in the great state of Georgia, but virtual as well. If yes. you need her, she is here. And I'm telling you, she's amazing. Um, she taught us some stuff in, in Memphis. Um, I, I, I want to shout out Demetria Bowie, because if it were not for yes. her, we wouldn't have never met to be able yes. to use this platform yes. together. So I'm telling you, connect with her. I, I, she, she's just what I need in this season. We haven't even gotten to being able to work with each other with her profession, but we go in there. <laughs> needed. She's very much needed. But to connect with me, you can connect with me on Facebook. I'm, I'm under Tracy Manley on Facebook. Um, if you look at my little, my, my banner back here, it says the conquering queen, welcome to the queendom. You can mm -hmm. also connect with my group on Facebook. It's called the conquering queen, the queendom of TCQ. You can find us on Facebook. Um, that's a women's group. Um, it's only open to women. It is a private group and we share I share encouraging words Monday through Friday. We do lives. Um, I bring in special guests. So looks like um, Miss Siobhan probably will be a special guest in 2023 in the Queendom, talking about marriage and family therapy. So connect with me there, ladies, because it's going to be some amazing things going on in the Queendom in 2023. Um, so that's how you can connect with me. Um, there'll be more platforms coming in 2023. I'm claiming it in Jesus name. Um, our prayer call Monday through Friday. I'm on there every Tuesday, but mo but Monday through Friday, we have amazing intercessors. Um, we'll, we'll get Siobhan Shav to put it in a group, but it's that phone number is 302-202-1108. And that PIN number is 486-458. And I'm going to make sure that I'm giving you the right number. Um, that prayer call is amazing, y'all. The prayer call is what, what brought me to the place that I am now. It was the prayer call. I wouldn't have never been birthed to these places if I had not connected to this prayer call. So that number is 302-202-1104. 
access code 486 458 and we're there monday through friday at 7 a.m so you can also connect with me and more intercessors there but i just want to thank you siobhan for um allowing me the opportunity to be on your Boy. show tonight and i look forward to the many things that we're going to do together in 2023 Yes, yes. You know what? Now, you know that you are a true woman of God, just a good woman of character. I appreciate you. You did not have to give a plug. You did not have to shout me out, uh, but you did. And I'm so appreciative of the fact um, this was your moment and you were able to share. Um, this is what it's all about. Uplifting sisters, uplift kingdom builders. We 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 keep building. We build uh, people up. So I'm so grateful to you. So thankful to you. So thankful for our connection. And I do believe that it just is not by chance that we are connected. Uh, we are good uh, by ourselves, right? What we're doing individually in our own with, with your businesses and thing you got going on. Uh, on the Pastor Tracy Manley, Pastor Tracy and and Andre Manley, me, uh, Siobhan Gross, and my husband, Reginald Gross. But listen, together, us coming together, we're better together, we're stronger together. So I'm believing God for great things to come uh, as a result of us partnering up and being able to do things. So please, guys, please, please, please join this, uh, follow uh, Tracy, uh, uh, be, get into her group that she has, and definitely the prayer call, because she just told you this is what did it for her. This is what helped her. Uh, so listen, guys, it has been so great. I don't even want to let this go. But I know that we have to uh, in 2023, you will see me and Pastor Tracy somewhere together doing yes. something uh, <laughs> other than in. Uh, I don't know if you are you coming to Los Angeles? Are you going to be there this time with us? I am. OK, good, good. <laughs> yay, yay. OK, so we so I will. Say, so we you and I would definitely be there uh, with uh, the uh, fabulous and the phenomenal Demetria Bowie. So this yes. is all of our time for the night, guys. We appreciate you for joining and please like and share for those of you who are watching via social media, because this is a needed word and a needed season for somebody. It may not have been for you, but it may be to someone that you are connected to. So listen, we bid all a good night, a good day, wherever you are. And don't forget to wow. And by wow, I mean to wish only well. Goodbye. Good night.